Hey there and welcome back. As we talked about in the first video, I'm about to share with you step-by-step -step approach to prioritizing your tasks so you have much more manageable time and stress-free schedule and workflow. Now, if you haven't already watched the first video, I highly encourage you to do that right now. Give yourself the context you need to absorb each video because each one builds upon the preceding one. Okay, so assuming you've already done that, let's dive in. So whether it's a change in ownership or you're just completely overwhelmed with all of the hot button items on your to-do list, I want you to walk through these steps with me. It may be a little bit awkward at first. You know, to adopt a new process may not be easy, but once you make it a habit, you're gonna find that your workflow becomes natural and effortless and sets you up for long-term success. And because you'll be seeing tangible results along the way, at work and at home, you'll wanna keep this thing going on for the rest of your life. Step one, take responsibility. The first step in anything I teach at Eversmarts is for you to take 100% responsibility for everything in your life, including this ginormous to-do list. Now is the time for you to step up and strap in and resolve to get your arms around all of this stuff, no matter what. Once you've made that commitment to say, this is it, then you're ready to move ahead. Step two, estimate time. You've got to review your list and determine how much time each one is gonna to take to accomplish it. Whether additional resources are necessary, like Delegating to members of your team, you've got to calculate all of that stuff in very, very quickly, but right up front. As we spoke about in the very first video, you're only one person. You can only do one thing at a time effectively. No multitasking. You have a finite amount of time and energy, as well as a finite budget and finite capacity of your team as well. So by estimating the amount of time things will take, before you get started, it will actually allow you to block time chunks right on your calendar so that you can focus your energies on completing the tasks as effectively as possible. This also allows you to assess how to best prioritize any other task that comes your way, and they will be coming. Step three, get buy-in. By this I mean get the buy-in of your asset manager, the property owner. When you've got more on your plate that's due today or sooner than you've got time for, you need to get some direction. Schedule some time to sit down and review your task list and say, if you want these things done, all due today, which is most important for you? After all, it's in her best interest to help you sort out what she needs to get from you first. It also shows her that you value her input and informs her exactly what you're working on and what's been accomplished thus far. But more importantly, it confirms that what you're doing is the most important thing for her. She's the customer. This removes any guesswork on your part. It gives you clear direction and gives your owner the satisfaction of knowing that her top priorities are being addressed. Step four, think outcomes. Consider the single most important outcome that if nothing else gets done that day, you've still created the greatest benefit. Determine the one thing that if nothing else gets done, you can claim victory for having produced this outcome. Whether it's the most important thing that your client just gave you, or maybe your why is strong enough, remember video number one, if your why is stronger for another outcome that can move the needle for you. Now remember, you're in control. You know the amount of time, energy, budget, resources that you have available at your disposal. So consider what's gonna move the needle for you. It may very well be that owner assigned task, or it might be something else that has a stronger way attached to it. Step number five, get focused. You need to deploy every success tactic in the book to set yourself up for a successful day. Now that means knowing your commitments on the calendar and blocking your time for the most important outcomes. But it also means closing your door, turning off your phone, and blocking all email pop-ups. Step number six, take action. And now that you've got everything prioritized, now you've set yourself up for focus, you can move diligently and swiftly 
towards the achievement of your highest priority items. In this step, you immediately delegate what can be delegated, eliminate what can be eliminated, and automate what can be automated. Now get to work on your number one goal. When thinking outcomes up front, you'll know that even if you get one task done, as I mentioned before, you'll know that you've spent your energies in the right place, doing the right things, and produce meaningful results. Of course, we'd like to get all of our front burner items off of our desk, but that may not be realistic. But because you've discussed your priorities with your client, delegated everything you can to your team, and focused your efforts on your number one task, and then your number two task, I mean, that's the logical order of things. If you don't get to task number three, you couldn't have done it by any other method. Everyone's in the know, including your client. Not long ago, I developed what I call a space planned day. No, I'm not talking about architecture here. I'm talking about the space I was planning was my time on my calendar and the space in between the commitments. Once I was able to prioritize my task list, the space plan method allowed me to schedule them in the context of my life priorities. It addresses the immediate and urgent, as well as the long-term important ones that need to be addressed continuously. Would you like to see the space plan day and learn how you can create one for yourself? I hope so. Well, that's what I'll be sharing in the next video, where I'll also be addressing how you can use this method to plan what matters most of professional and personal importance. I'll see you there.